My name is Gustav Hertz. I am known for my work in the Franck Hertz experiment. My partner in this experiment was James Franck, and we performed this experiment at the University of Berlin in Germany in 1914 during the first year of World War I. In this experiment, our goal was to demonstrate that electrons occupy only discrete, quantized energy states. Specifically, my role began when I began studies on electron impact and ionization potential in various gases. Our experiment was set up using a vacuum tube with mercury enclosed. Heat was then added to vaporize mercury. Then a series of voltages was applied to the tube. A small voltage was used to heat the filament for a source of electrons. Three more voltages were then used to establish electric fields inside the tube. The first small field was used to sweep electrons away from the filament. We observed that when filaments eject electrons, they become slightly positive, and the area around the filament becomes slightly negative due to the cloud of electrons. The second field was an accelerating field, and the third is a reverse field that acts to block electrons from the counter. Then, the electrons were accelerated by a voltage towards a positively charged grid in a glass envelope filled with mercury vapor. Past the grid was a collection plate. It held a small voltage with respect to the grid values of the accelerating volts. This is where the current dropped and gave a measure of energy necessary to force an electron to an excited state. This experiment showed that when an electron strikes an atom of mercury vapor, the electron must possess a certain level of energy, in this case, 4.9 electron volts, in order for that energy to be absorbed by an atom. Eventually, we realized that 4.9 electron volts exactly corresponded with the energy level needed to have the electrons within the atom make an abrupt transition to a higher energy level. This demonstrated atoms absorb energy in precise, indefinite amounts or quanta. It also gave proof to what Niels Bohr had foreseen when he created the Bohr's atom to explain the nature of the atom. The resulting effect this had on the physics community was seemingly profound. Not only did it confirm the quantum theory, and at a time when it was in its inf infancy, it also supported the Bohr's model that had already been created. After one of our lectures, Albert Einstein spoke in very high regard of our findings. He said, it was so lovely, it makes you cry. This incurred a Nobel Peace Prize that we received in 1925. We began working on this experiment in 1913, and by the end of 1914, we had completed it. After, I took a break from my work and served in the military until I was seriously injured and returned back to my research after I was unable to fully heal.